Welcome to Location, the local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Loquitur. On April 11th, the executive director of the Alliance to End Hunger, Tony Hall, came to speak to students and faculty about the need to end world hunger in our country and also abroad. In order to send a message, Hall has not eaten since March 28th. Ambassador Tony Hall has been on a hunger strike for 15 days due to the lack of financial support from the United States for those malnourished worldwide. This past Monday, he came to Cabrini and spoke before a large audience of students and faculty. Dr. Ann Skladar introduced the ambassador to those in attendance. Ambassador Hall has served as chairman of the House Select Committee on Hunger and the Democratic Caucus Task Force on Hunger, founded and chaired the Congressional Hunger Center and was a founding member of the Select Committee on Hunger. With the current economic situation of the United States, Dr. Zurich asked questions as to how the United States should be spending its money. Should money for the military go up or go down? Should old people fund their own retirement or should there be a basic retirement fund for everyone? Should all people be guaranteed a basic nutritional diet? I went on a fast for similar reasons uh, that I'm fasting today, although the reason I'm fasting today is much worse, but in those days we had high deficits as well. And the Congress at the time said to the American public, you know, we have high deficits, we need to cut and live within our own budget. I decided after talking to some friends that um, I would go on a fast, and I went on a water-only fast for 22 days, and I was going to fast to God until something good happened. So you come 18 years where we are now, and the situation is even more dire. The prices of food and energy are extremely high. Uh, it's pushing a lot more people into poverty. At least two and a half billion people in the world today are living on less than two dollars a day. <clears throat> and before the day is up, 25,000 people are going to die of hunger. After his speech, students and faculty spoke in support of Ambassador Hall's beliefs. It's right in the world and an average life expectancy that has been cut in half. There's no voice for them. There's no lobbyists. They have no pack. And it's time for our values for our country to come back so that we can get behind these people and have a voice for them. This is Megan Sokolowski for Location. Back to you at the news desk. For the second year in a row, Cabrini is celebrating Epic Week. The week-long celebration features events like Cabrini's Got Talent, a trip to the Phillies game, Big Prize Bingo, and Inflatable Fun Day. The week will conclude with the Spring Formal on Saturday, April 16th. Encouraging young people to carry God's message is Dr. Tony Campolo's mission. He's a speaker, pastor, author, social activist, and sociologist who is a devoted follower of Jesus. He's a well-known religious speaker and a professor of sociology at Eastern University. Cabrini hosted prospective students and their families during this year's Accepted Students Day. Let's check in with Jimmy to learn more. On Sunday, April 10th, prospective students and their families were invited to visit Cabrini. Tours of the campus, a brown bag lunch in the Dixon Center, and a student panel in the Widener Center Lecture Hall were just some of the many events that happened this past Sunday. Many clubs and organizations were represented at the Involvement Fair, allowing prospective students and their families to better understand what goes on here at Cabrini. The area and the location is not as I thought it was, it's actually better. And a lot of the people are nice here, the staff, they asked me was I okay, did I like it, things like that. I like the student panel, they were funny, they were, they actually answered the questions that you asked them without like beating around the bush. No, I definitely liked the way today went, and I'm excited to go to school. I liked the student panel, offered a lot of helpful information, and gave us a side to see of actual students that go here, their opinions of the school, instead of just hearing administration saying, you know, this is about the school and that. So, interesting to see their conflicting opinions between each other as well. Campus is very beautiful, so I like, you know, how there's a lot of space to walk in between, you know, there's, it just seems like a very friendly, welcoming environment, and definitely a nice place to be for college campus. 
Today's very fun. I thought it was well planned and definitely, definitely good for incoming students to learn a lot and to feel welcome. For location, I'm Jimmy Kroll. Back to you in the studio. And those were your top stories in the Loquitur. For more information, pick up a copy around campus or visit theloquitur.com. On Tuesday, April 12th, Epic Week kicked off with Big Prize Bingo. Let's take a look to find out more. Epic Week is filled with different activities for an entire week. Catboard kicked off this year's Epic Week with Big Prize Bingo in the marketplace. There were 10 prizes totaling $100 each. A huge crowd of students showed up for the event, making it a huge success. Other events taking place this week include Bounce and Band on Wednesday, Cabrini's Got Talent on Thursday where five finalists will be performing, Philly's Game on Friday with a pep rally at lunch in the marketplace, and to finish it off, Spring Formal on Saturday. This year's theme is Cavaliers Through the Years. To find out more information, stop by the SEAL office in the Widener Center. I'm Jenny Wergis reporting for Location, now back to you at the news desk. And here's your flashback to This Week in History. This week in 1865, John Wilkes Booth, an actor, fatally shot President Abraham Lincoln during a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. The attack came only five days after Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered his massive army at the Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, effectively ending the American Civil War. In 1906, an early morning earthquake, close to 8 on the Richter scale, struck San Francisco, California, killing hundreds of people and toppling many buildings. The quake was caused by a slip of the San Andreas Fault, and shocked waves could be felt from southern Oregon down to Los Angeles. And that was your week in history. And now let's take a trip around the world. According to the New York Times, security forces opened fire in Yemen on Saturday, killing one protester and wounding 15 others. The violence began after a group of protesters tried to march to the presidential palace. This was the first direct assault since snipers killed 52 protesters more than three weeks ago. The New York Times also reported that mourners filled the streets of Bahrain on Wednesday protesting against a royal family. They did not seem to be afraid of police while attending a funeral march for the plumber who was found dead in a garbage bag. With Saudi troops in place to support King Khalifa, Bahrain is now being ruled under martial law. As another political season nears in Zimbabwe, President Robert Mugabe's party is pushing for a quick election. There are no successors to unite the group, which threatens to split the party. Officials want Mugabe to campaign for another five-year term. And that was your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Liz and our Person of the Week. Hi everybody, I'm Liz and today I have Danielle Alio, Location's own producer and the current Miss Cabrini. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for talking to me, Liz. What made you decide to come to Cabrini? Did you expect yourself to be as involved as you are? Your work ethic is incredible. So I'm curious, were you always dedicated to school? I was always dedicated to school, that's what I would say. Um, I worked really hard in high school and I took the honors courses, you know, stuff like that, part of uh, National Honor Society. Then when it came to look for a college, I visited several schools and then I came here and there was something about it and a lot of people here say the same exact thing that, you know, you come to the campus and it's like you fall in love with it instantly and that's kind of what happened to me, you know, driving up the driveway on King of Prussia Road. I know it sounds, you know, cliche and everybody says it, but it is the truth and I think I knew deep down that this is where I wanted to be. You're the producer of Location, you're the managing editor of The Loquitur, and you're the assistant director of productions for WYBF. You also have had done internships and you were in the play. How do you balance everything? You know, it definitely, you know, takes some time management skills. Um, you can do everything you want to do. College is the time to do whatever you want to do. And I wanted to, you know, test the waters in radio. I wanted to be involved in video. I wanted to be a part of The Loquitur. And theater is something I've done since high school, so I could not go another year without doing theater. And it just came naturally because I'm so used to time management. And if it's, if it's something you really want to do and if it's something you're really dedicated to, you will find a way to make it all work. 
ultimately, what is your goal? What do you hope to achieve in the future? You know, I have another year here, so it's a lot more, um, you know, seeing what I want to do, seeing what I love. I love video. Video right now is where I think I really want to be. I love creating video pieces, uh, documentary pieces, like educational pieces. I've met a lot of great people here, interviewed a lot of great people that kind of inspired me. So that's kind of where I hope to see myself in the future. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really loved having you. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you so much, everybody. Now back to the studio. And now let's check in with Holly for your sports update. Thanks, Pat. The number 17 Cabrini College men's lacrosse team lost to number 8 Roanoke 14-13. In the game, sophomore Bobby Thorpe led the Cavaliers with five points, collecting four goals and one assist. Senior Dan Terenic also chipped in with three goals and one assist. Sophomore goalkeeper Eric Sarzecki made his 30th career start and posted a career-high 22 saves in the loss. The Cavaliers are set to take on Centenary College at Centenary on Saturday, April 16th at 3 o'clock. One big issue that has been affecting the sports world the last few weeks has been the NFL lockout and the possibility of no professional football season this year. Let's take a look at what students and staff around cap campus had to say on the issue. And my thoughts on the NFL lockout are very sad and mad because I am a big football fan and go Cowboys. Uh, my feelings on the NFL lockout are I can see both sides of the fence. Um, I can see why players are uh, unhappy with what the owners want, but I can also see why the owners uh, are pushing for what they want. Um, I think the 18-game schedule is a little bit too much, um, so I see why the players would be unhappy with something like that. Um, but I also see why the owners would want 18-game schedules to make some money. money. So I, I'm kind of an objective person. I can see both sides of the fence. Um, I honestly really don't care about the NFL lockout because I think the players are overpaid anyway, so I think they should just get it over with and start playing. So, um, I'm a huge NFL fan, big Green Bay Packers fan, so you know this is an okay offseason for me. But with the lockout going on, I have several opinions. Um, the fans are definitely the ones who are suffering the most, and I think that the owners and players have kind of risen to a level of arrogance where they don't really necessarily you know, connect with the common person. And to hear players complaining about not getting health insurance is kind of hard to hear when they're making at a minimum $450,000 a year. And there's people out there who are laid off from $30,000 a year jobs who don't have insurance. And those people probably don't appreciate an athlete complaining about not being able to have health insurance. Hopefully everyone can put their differences aside so we can look forward to a great 2012 season. For location, this is Olivia. Back to you at the news desk. In other professional sports news, the Philadelphia Phillies fell to former Philly Jason Wirth and the Washington Nationals 7-4. to After the first game in the series, I'm sure many Phillies fans are still bitter about Wirth being traded because in the game he doubled, homered, walked, and scored twice. The Phillies and Nationals will resume the second of the three-game series in Washington, D.C., Wednesday, April 13th at 7.05. That's all the sports news I have for you this week. Be sure to tune into location next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Holly. Now let's check in with Danielle for your red carpet rants. Hey, guys. Danielle here with your entertainment news. Well, today's segment is all about the up upcoming royal wedding because everyone seems to be obsessing over it. The royal family, the royal wedding, and the engagement ring are everybody's obsession, and I am no different. However, I am slightly infatuated, not obsessed. And I may be considering purchasing an imitation engagement ring for one easy payment of $19.99. But wait, good news for everyone that can't get enough of Will and Kate and didn't get an invitation to the... Okay, this is like the prompter's going weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like trying to make things up as it's going. Hey guys, Danielle here with your entertainment news. Well, today's segment is all about the up upcoming royal wedding because everyone seems to be obsessing over the royal family, the royal wedding, and the giant engagement ring, that, and I am no different. However, I am slightly infatuated, not obsessed, and I may have considered purchasing an imitation engagement ring for one easy payment of $19.99. But wait, good news for everyone that can't get enough of Will and Kate and didn't get an invitation to the, in the mail. 
Lifetime will be airing Monday, April 18th at 8 p.m. a special about Will and Kate, so make sure you put on your tiara and tune in. In other royal news, Prince William once asked George Michael to sing a song for him at a Christmas party, and the singer refused because he was too shy. Well, William learned that you got to keep faith because George Michael now has something in the works for the royal couple in honor of their wedding. Can't wait to hear it, George. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'm off to purchase my fake royal engagement ring. Make sure you tune in next week for a very special Easter edition of Red Carpet Rants. I'm Danielle McLaughlin, and this is the Easter Bunny. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's check in with me in for just a thought. Hey, it's you and just a thought. Billionaire CEO and reality TV star Donald Trump has been in the news a lot lately, talking about Obama's birth records. I'm sure Donald Trump should have better things to do with his time, but what's a conspiracy theory among friends? Trump even went so far as to call the Obama presidency the greatest scam in the history of the country. There are worse scams, more notably casinos and business seminars that claim to be university when they're not even accredited. Of course, Mr. Trump wouldn't know anything about that. He's too busy trying to figure out whether he's running for office or not. Can we bring back Rosie O'Donnell? At least when she was still around to argue with him, there was double the stupidity to enjoy. I'm Ian, and that's just the thought. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Enjoy your weekend, Cabrini.